Hello everyone, it is December 14th, 2022. It is a Wednesday night. I usually don't stream on a Wednesday, but you know what? It's been almost two weeks since I streamed last time and I thought we gotta do this. We gotta get back to it. I had a lot of work stuff going on. It was taken over and then I had a lot of family stuff and a little bit of both coming together and it made it so I couldn't stream in a while, but we're back at it. I am not gonna go away that easily, people. Welcome to the chat, everyone. I hope you're doing well. I am alive, thanks, Data Basics. What's up, ya Jav? Uh, long time no see for sure. How have you guys been? Let me know in chat. What's new? What's been going on? I see someone in YouTube wants to know how to get in contact with me. The best way is to join our Discord. So if you're in uh, the Twitch chat, which I recommend you join the Twitch chat, by uh, going to Medallion Stallion on Twitch, you can, let me see my creator dashboard. Let's pull this over here and do exclamation point discord. And that will get you the link to my discord channel. That's the best way to contact me semi-personally, kind of, kind of privately. But yeah, that's how we do it. That's how we do it here, folks. How's everyone doing? Um, it's been a while, like I said. We're gonna get to some coding here soon. I wanna take a poll as to what we're gonna work on. I have two things in mind and I want you all to be open-minded about what to choose because you're gonna decide it based on your votes in chat. So let's go ahead and make a poll Let's make a new poll. Maybe I could show this. We can make a poll on what should we, what data should we look at tonight? And we have two options. Number one is the SEC data. Now we've worked on this before on stream. It's publicly available data about a bunch of companies. We've already pulled that data, but we haven't actually uh, gone the extra mile with it. So it could be the continuation that with that. And the second one, and I'm going to start the poll here, and then I'm going to make my um, I'm going to make my pitch for it. It's a uh, late night. Ah, if I can type TV YouTube migration. Oh. YouTube migration. It's just gonna have to be migra migration. Um, and I'm gonna start this poll. Let's view the results as it's going. So there it is. Go ahead, you can vote on that. By the way, if you don't follow me on Twitch, you're on YouTube, jump on all of, over to Twitch, that's the place to be. There's the link, I'm putting it in chat. So here's the thing with the YouTube late night migration. So I am... Um, I am a, a child of the 90s, so I grew up watching late night television. I know it's not the cool thing anymore, but it was the thing when I was a kid. And I still watch late night television. And one thing I've noticed, which is really interesting, and that's where I think this data analysis could kind of get interesting, is I have um, noticed that these channels that create, or these, these, um, Types of, this type of media that is produced on a daily basis used to be that they would want to keep it on TV only and they would wait until it aired live or it's mostly on a delay. But whenever it aired, that's when they would release it. Like they'd wait a few hours until it was over to release it on YouTube. I have noticed in the past year that many, many of these outlets have migrated to just putting everything on YouTube even hours before it airs on television. And I've noticed this happen so drastically that I think we might even be able to see which one of the late night shows uh, caused this to happen or kind of was the first one to jump on it because like everything on the internet, one person starts doing it, then everyone joins in. And I've noticed them all just start to upload their late night shows earlier and earlier in the night. It's I'm talking um, tonight's show, uh, the uh, late 
Night Show with Colbert, whatever it's called. Um, there's a few of them. The Daily Show, Seth Meyers, all these shows are out there and they're starting to upload their stuff earlier and earlier in the day. And I was starting to look at this by pulling down the YouTube data, but I didn't get very far and I thought we could do it on stream. So that's the late night migration that we could look at. SEC data is still there. We looked at that, that before, but I could see the poll is kind of pulling for what I've been um, rooting for. So let's see what the chat's up to. What do I mean by data wrangling? It's, it's just a generic term for um, manipulating data, moving data around, um, doing aggregations and joins of data. That's the idea when I say data wrangling. So I don't know if it's official term. Is there data wrangling? Hey, let's do this. Let's go to chat GPT since this is the biggest thing that's come out since I've streamed last. And that's, that's uh, chat GPT blowing my mind with all the stuff that chat GPT can do. What is data wrangling and how can you do it with Python and pandas? Let's ask the all knowing chat GPT if it can explain this to us. Uh, I really enjoyed watching Letterman when I was 12 for some reason. Craig Ferguson was too, was good too, although he was later. Yeah, I never got into Craig Ferguson, but I always watched David Letterman. He was my go-to. And I actually got to go see David Letterman live with my wife before um, he went off air. And guess who was supposed to be the guest that night? I bet you guys can't guess who was supposed to be that guest that night. And then some news came out and he decided to drop out. Mr. Bill Cosby was supposed to be on that show. Uh, but some terrible uh, accusations, which turned out to be true, came out after, after not too long. So, uh, or earlier that week, and he did not appear on that show. All right, let's see what what chat GPT says data wrangling is. So this is the official all-knowing answer. Now, now uh, just a side note on chat GPT. It is a little weird that there's like one model out there that can do so, like can just blow our minds compared to what we were able to do with these types of models just a few weeks ago or a month ago. Like I didn't know that this was possible. How good it is, it is a little bit scary. But I think as data scientists, as people who want to code, as people who are interested in this technology, we need to embrace it. We need to learn how to work with it. And I've already been able to use it to enhance my life, to enhance the work that I've been working on recently. Uh, so I encourage you to do that too. Let's read what, but let's also be a little bit skeptical of it, right? Because you can't just believe, like there's no sources that you can't find the source associated with this. Not even the authors who made this algorithm know that. So we need to be a little skeptical. That being said, usually has pretty good answers. I mean, to general questions, data wrangling is the process of cleaning, transforming and organizing data so it can be used effectively. That kind of makes sense. This often involves tasks such as removing missing or duplicate data, transforming data into a suitable format, Emerging different data sources. This is essentially what I said as my answer, right? Just not as good as, as this. Um, so yeah, Python and Pandas are popular tools for data wrangling because they provide powerful and easy to use data structures. That's data frames mainly. And functions for working with structured data. So you can work with date time columns pretty easily in P Python and Pandas. You can work with, uh, I don't know, uh, various types of data, categorical features, uh, numeric data, floating point data. Okay, to do data wrangling with Python pandas, you can use a pandas library. To read data from an external data source. That's what we're gonna do, except we're gonna load it in using the YouTube API. Here's an example of how you might use Python pandas to perform data wrangling. <laughs> I like this, they just show a 
Just straight up drop an A. Don't even think about it. Just read in your data and then drop all the null values. So this will drop every row with any missing values. This is not uh, probably good practice unless you're, you understand what you're doing. Um, uh, what did David J. Jackson say? Uh, data wrangling equals data cleaning. Kind of, kind of. Uh, get, get me a job. Uh, I, Jav, I can try. I don't know. Who did I get instead? Who? I don't know what that means. Oh, who did I get instead of uh, Bill Cosby? I forget. I honestly forget. He probably brought on someone that was there. Thanks. Uh, use that in data engineering uh, interchangeably. Yeah, I think of data wrangling more as kind of like the stuff you're doing on the fly with your data. Data engineering is sort of like building these productionized pipelines that can take data sources and like churn through them every day. Data wrangling, I think of more of when the data is like a medium size and you want to do some sort of analysis with it, then you need to wrangle that bad boy. Uh, what do you mean by giving chat GBT your number? I don't understand what that even means. Crazy fanatic man said you should be able to sign in with open AI account. Yeah, yeah, this is free. You just need to create an account. Uh, no funny chat GPT results appending. Answer is if I'm return, referring to pandas, the snakes and pandas, the bear. Oh, pythons, the snakes and pandas, the bears. Oh, let's. Let's see what that question would return. Panda, Python as in snake and pandas as in the bears. Let's see what this returns. I wonder if ChatGB can do my job. So ChatGBT I feel like can assist mo most people in their job. But then when it goes wrong, here's the thing about these type of models that I've, I've uh, realized a little bit over the years, and this may, I may, may be proven wrong, but what I've noticed is that um, it's really not easy, but it's possible to get like a 90% good solution using deep learning. Now, granted, this is like a 95%, like the really good solution. Um, but I think back to my days when I first started learning about machine learning and data science, there are videos of cars being driven by, by uh, algorithms. And I just thought to myself, well, this is, what was that? Five, or, five to 10 years ago? And I was thinking by the 2020s, by the late 2018s, we'll have self-driving cars for sure. Just autonomous vehicles, you just flip a switch and it'll drive for you. There's a problem to that. And there's a problem that, uh, that I've realized in many of my experiences with deep learning solutions is that usually can get you 90% there. And then that extra 10% is what takes all the time. Or that, that's like the gap that's very hard to um, make up the difference. Now, granted, like everything has been kind of like throwing me for a loop lately with all the stuff, open AI and all these new uh, GAN type models that have been coming out like chat GBT and like Dolly two. But I still think, you know, you, you run Dolly two and you ask it to make an image of a, of a dog, like I did in a video um, with stable diffusion. And it might, the dog might have two tongues coming out of its face. Let me show you this, this artwork. Actually, let me go to, um, to here. Show you guys this image. It's kind of small here, but this dog here, you can kind of see it there that I made with stable diffusion. I thought the image looked so great, but it has two tongues sticking out of its mouth. So that's the sort of 90% thing. Hey, look at this late night YouTube migration has won the fight tonight. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, I did start looking at this, but I did not complete it. 
This was 18 days ago and I haven't looked at this since. So yeah, that's my thing about, about these deep learning models. I don't think they're gonna completely take over our jobs, but the amount of boring stuff that they can automate is just becoming more and more. Can I make ChatGPT code in Haskell? Like it can code in anything it seems like, or in everything. It's so good. All right, so let's do this. Let's clear all the outputs on this and let's start as if I was starting this from new. So one thing I, I realized is that I was doing this the other day using my uh, code that we already created on stream to pull our video info. Um, let me delete this YouTube key one make our YouTube object. But I realized that most of these channels, I was taking a look at some of the data, I realized that most of these channels have a, a, a lot, a lot of videos. And the YouTube API will stop, block us from pulling data from the YouTube API after 10,000 requests, which is a lot. So I think what I need to do and what the analysis I was doing before, I had assumed I was getting all of the data, but then I realized, oh, it's actually, it's actually breaking after, after a thousand, uh, after 10,000. So maybe we should just go with the 2022 and 2021 data, but then I need to figure out how to change all of our queries. So let's go open up. Let me go to the directory in my terminal that we were working in. Here's our stream projects. And I think I'm importing here from uh, 007 this YouTube pullers code. So let's open up this with VS code. And maybe Copilot can help us out here. November release notes that shows how old this is. Um, okay, so let's remind ourselves of this code that I wrote a while ago. Uh, people are saying it broke. Do a poll, Argentina versus France. Oh, you guys in your uh, World Cup. We got Brazilian and Uruguay in here, and I'm curious. What else did other people say? I just wish it wouldn't crash or so. Yeah, I've seen it crash a good amount of times for me today. I was surprised it didn't. Hey, Robert E, thanks for subscribing. Let's spin the wheel. Spin the wheel for Robert E. If you subscribe on Twitch, which by the way, you can do for free using your Amazon Prime account, uh, I will spin this wheel and do whatever it says. And it landed on do nothing. Thanks, Robert. Because of you, I get to do nothing. So I'm gonna just keep coding. All right, so why is this giving me a two blank lines? Okay. All right, so what are we doing here? Let's pick the right environment. And let's remember what this code does. So we use our YouTube object to do a search here. Why would YouTube limit the request? Because they don't want people just like uh, killing them up. Hey, Chrissy Codes in chat. PG Maddie data is money. Um, so when we wrote this code before, we basically gave it this max results because this search will run forever otherwise. And the way the YouTube search um, API works is you have this YouTube object, which you can search based on your query 
and then it'll give 50 results, but then it'll give you the token for the following page. So imagine if you're searching on YouTube, like on the website, you search for something, well, nowadays it doesn't, you can just scroll forever, but imagine you're going down 50 and then the page is over, done, and then you can click next. It basically gives you that link to the next 50. So uh, what this code does is it searches for 50, but it's doing it for in the range of the max results, which we then we've divided by 50. And then it's then we're replacing this next page token and basically running this, executing this again and getting a new result. So what we need to do here is get our query to also have a year filter. Oh, that you're guessing that's why you two would limit the request. That makes sense. So let's let's again remind ourselves of this API. This is the YouTube data API. I think it's the V3 API and let's do a query. So we're using this search by location, by keyword. I'm basically sending a get request to this YouTube three API endpoint. By default, the search result identifies matching video channel and playlist resources, but you can also configure to be a specific resource. So I have this pull all video info function, which I wrote, and this is down here. So what does this do? This finds our channel ID based on the channel name. So we give it the channel name. We use this YouTube object to search. It executes a search with max result of one and then returns the channel ID. Then we use the channel ID and our query is just blank. So basically we need to test this query. All right, so let's use this fun these functions that we've already created. Get channel ID. Let's import this get channel ID. And let's also import this get search results. All right, so if we get our channel, we're basically getting breaking down what we're doing in that other function. So we're gonna give it this channel name, which is, uh, let's do Jimmy Kimmel. Actually, let's do the daily show. And then let's provide it with YouTube. And get our channel ID. So this is the channel ID of the daily show. It should be at least if we search for it. Yeah, it's going to bring us to this page, which is the daily show. Um, now we could take this and basically run our search with it. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. So this is going to restrict, the way we're doing it here, it's gonna restrict our search only to their channel ID. So let's replace this with my channel ID. Let's get max results as one. And then let's figure out how to get this query to work. So our query currently right now is just blank. Let's say year is greater than 2021. Next page token is not defined. Okay, how do we define that? Okay, we're gonna start out with next page token is none. And then we'll get our results. Uh, so this is Google's 2021 year in search. I did greater than 2021. And this is from December 16th, 2021. I wanna actually understand how this query works. Standard query parameters, let's look here. Google's API platform provides a set of common functionality for all APIs built using the platform. In order to use the control such fu functionality, the platform predefines a special set of request parameters. This is not the querying that we're trying to do. This is something different. All right, Q parameter specifies the query to search for. Your request can also be use Boolean, not, or, or operators to exclude videos to find. So this is just searching like query Is there any like dates that we can filter this search on? Learn to code will turn you to learn to welcome to McDonald's. What? 2021 may, may mean uh, 1 1 2021. But I, I think I did greater than. If I did greater than or equals to, I would think. See, I think it's just. This is like the equivalent of if I went into Google or I went into YouTube, like if I did this year equals 2022, that's why it's showing the year in search because it had the word year in it and it had 2021 in it, right? This isn't actually filtering on the date. Okay, so maybe we could do this. It's by order, order by date. So maybe we need to do order by date. And we want our query just to be blank then. And let's just pull one. The response here is a result from 2022 12, 14, which is today. So that means that it is the pulling the most recent first. This is good. So now it's not ordered by any sort of like hierarchy of how, how popular the video is. What does what even mean? Is it just matching strings, Lopta? I think if this query is actually doing like a search like you would with Google search. I don't think that there's like anything... Uh, they're not going to tell us exactly how the, the search decides what to throw up at the top, but I'll tell you when I ran it before, it did not necessarily go by date. Now, the fact that I put order by date, I think now has forced it to. Otherwise, I think it might sort by relevance. Uh, it looks like we could give it title and it would give us the results by the title alphabetically or by video count or view count. So we could just take... Say, okay, give us the most viewed videos 
uh, or channels with the most videos. Can you use published before or published after? Ooh. Ooh, there we go. Chrissy Coates, thank you. That's that's a great idea. Published after. And now we need uh they use RFC 3339. Let's ask. What is RFC 3339 and how does it work? It's just a date time formatting. Oh, there's a question in the chat, but not for me. Rob, do you have any opinions about what data transformation using large sequence of change methods as, as well as evangelized by Matt Harrison, author of Vective? Uh, my opinions are that it's great. It's best practice to do it that way. It's what the pandas... Uh, core developers, I think, push for using, which is, yeah, chaining Panda stuff. But I also think in practice, if you're working through the data real quickly, you might not be able to do that. Xcode, thank you for subscribing on Twitch. Appreciate it. How long has it been, Xcode? How long has it been? Let's spin this. Let's see what Twitch, it says. Four months, Xcode. Thank you so much. I'm spinning this for you. Oh no, is it gonna land on do nothing twice in a row? Sorry, Xcode, but not sorry. All right, published after 2021-0101. And let's do this. See, it's still gonna give us this most recent one first but this at least will this is good i've learned enough about python from your stream built the first project for work using it nice that's awesome man xcode thanks for hanging out lol random seed what are you talking about robert e okay so this is great chrissy codes thanks for finding that i don't know how i didn't see this date right in front of my face so now we're guaranteeing we're only looking at 2021 and beyond we're ordering by date and i think we're good okay so basically in this code i want to be able to pass through this so this one Max results is whatever we provide in to pull all video data. But let's sort this. Let's make this have a default order by date. Look at that. Auto correct or auto fill in by uh, by copilot. So order by order now. Nope. Order by order. This looks good. So our old co code, it did this, but then it did some other extra stuff, which I've actually added more to here. Oh yeah, I gave it an output directory. All right, so the way I made it work is it, it threw out, let's make a directory here. It's called old, this will give me all the old stuff I pulled. And this is our December 14th run. So we can remember now it's going to make a CSV in here with all of our results, but I also want it to return the results. So I think I modified this. I don't want it to pull thumbnails. Let's make this true by default. 
And then if pull thumbnails, we'll do this. And we're gonna return our DF final. Yeah, let's just have this, this also a parameter. All right, so now we should be able to do, let's delete all this now that we understand it. We have it now ordered by date. We don't actually need to put that, um, actually, let me undo that delete. We don't need to do the published after necessarily. Um, I guess we could, you know, we don't, want, we don't need to do that because we're doing it by order. So I'm just gonna pull like a thousand from each. Twitch stream isn't working. What are you talking about? Am I not live? Oh no, no, I'm here. Look, I'm here. Published before might be more interesting. What do you mean? So we're trying to see how, and I've, what I've noticed is in the past year that uh, that they've been releasing things earlier and earlier. So, I mean, ideally I'll, I'll run this like every day till I get all of it. But for tonight, let's try to limit it just to 2021 or let's like do... I should just go ahead and do this. So what's the default for published after? Is it none? If I do this as none, will it, will it execute? It shall, it shall. So, I can make published after also here. Yeah, so I basically have all this code that pulls these stats, formats them, and then I have some extra code here that formats it even more. Um, but let's go ahead and restart this kernel so I make sure I'm pulling in the latest version of my other code. This should be good. We have our channels here, which we're gonna pull for the daily show. Look, I do have a return DF. Oh, that's it. I am put this here. If it does return data frame, it'll return it right here. So I don't need to do that there. And what I also need to do here is max results. Let's do... Uh, YouTube Python API v3 limit daily limit. Let's see what that is. Just to yeah, 10,000 units per day. So if we have like five channels we're interested in right now, then we could do in theory 2000, I think in two years, I doubt they have more than 2000 in a channel per year. Let's be con let's go all out and let's do it. All right, daily show. And let's save off each individually. So I don't like the fact that I'm looping through channels in here. 
Oh, here I go. I'm saving it. I'm saving it here. And then I was concatenating them together. And then I was saving them all together. I guess that's fine. All right. We ready to go? Wait, 2000 what? What do you mean 2000? Yeah, so this means the maximum results it's going to respond with. But since we put, oh, we didn't put the date. We didn't put the minimum date. We didn't put the minimum date like we did here. Published after date. So we're gonna add it this to the function that's just gonna pass through, right? Or published after. Um, so then we can feed this in to not this version of the code, but here. published after and then we got to get the right formatting so let's put all this stuff down here and let's make this This is what we're doing right now. We're testing on a single channel so we don't get blocked out. What's the output again? Video IDs. The output will be a data frame uh, which has the videos and all the information associated with them, like the view count, the date. The date stuff is what we're really interested in because I want to see when they're released. Um, test on a single ch channel. So we're going to use the daily show. Pull going back to 1 1 2021 and we'll see just an example of how many there actually are uh, we're also maxing out is 2000 that's why we're putting this max date let's also get the published after format The RFC3339. Oh, wait, has chat GPT told us what how it works? It's just a standard for representing dates. So this 2021-0101. All right, this look good. Is there anything I'm missing? You think chat GPT will stat hurt Stack Overflow? Funny you asked that, PG Maddie. If you go to my YouTube channel, exclamation point YouTube, that was my latest video. I did a comparison of that. It was, uh, did chat GPT just end Stack Overflow? Then I noticed someone else had a video with the exact same name. So either I'm very unoriginal or they saw my name and liked it change their YouTube video name to mine. Yeah, check out my YouTube video on it. I go I go through three examples. I don't think it's going to replace it basically. Um, not yet. And also, here's the thing. If ChatGPT is fed on st stuff like Stack Overflow answers, it won't it's not self-sustaining. It can't think of any new results. It's just giving it's just feeding us what it's compiled. Will it replace everything? Yes, Robert, it will. So I can't think of any new results. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it knows numbers. It knows ones and zeros. It doesn't know what a boat is. It doesn't know what, what that protocol is. It just knows to mush those words together and feed it to us because that will, uh, that, that, 
is the objective function that it's been trained on to feed us answers that we think are good. All right, pull all video info for this channel. Our channel is going to be Uh, that's not in the list. Return a data frame. We're not going to save the results yet. It got this unexpected thing. Unexpected, unexpected. But that's because I changed that code. There's this extension you can use called auto reload like this oh wait you have to do two but i don't like using it oh i think i need to do load extension auto reload and then auto reload two but i don't like using it because um it always makes me uneasy as to which version i'm using of my code and then if you modify a class in which you've instantiated an object of, it can really screw things up. So that's why I'm staying away from that, by the way, folks. But that is an option. All right, let's pull this. Go, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. All right, you can see why it's going through 40. Is it gonna fail? Is it, gonna, did they, did they freeze us from doing it? Uh, okay, so. 40 times 50, because it pulls 50 results per page. That's why it's going to 50. Now it stopped at 10. That means that our results, our data frame, should have, let's look at the min publish time. February 28th. Did they not post stuff in early 2021? It should go all the way back. Let's go, let's create a new incognito. The Daily Show. Videos. Let's go back. Oh, I don't wanna do this. Four months. But if they stop training on on new data wouldn't get old. Yeah, so ChatGPT, if you ask it questions about recent info, it'll say we've only been trained up until 2021. So don't ask me recent stuff. Man, I want to make a bloody game. I want to use ChatGPT to make it because it has tons of work. Yeah, that's not the way to approach it. I think ChatGPT will just make your life better. If, all right, what are these dates? Why don't they show me dates? Let's look at this tail. Basically it's saying this is the oldest one there. Cor coronavirus updates. Oh, maybe this is when they're shut down because of coronavirus. If you don't, didn't know, you don't know, international. No, this is not the right page. Wait, this is the video. This is from one year ago, it says though. So that means that this one, this next one should be in the end of 2020. What are the dates? Where's the date? Give me the date. March 9th, 2021. Oh, I guess this is a reoccurring segment. Shows how much I know. Two years ago. I 
I guess we're gonna have to do some data wrangling to figure out if we're missing anything. So let's go ahead and do, let's run this at our published columns on this data frame. So these are a bunch of features based off of this published time that I'm creating, like the hour, the minute that it was published and all that jazz. And then let's save it so it's not gone. So we still have it, hopefully. Here it is. In case everything crashes, we won't have to reload this. Um, but let's go ahead and do this. Let's do the shape of this. So it's saying it's 516 videos in two years. That kind of makes sense, right? Let me turn my heater off. Um, let's plot this to see. So looking at the columns, we have the view count in millions. Let's set the index as the publish time, which I think is actually the date and time, right? And then the view count in million. Yeah, something's weird here. It's definitely missing some of the older stuff. Why is it not showing me everything? We did feed it in max results here, which should be 2000. So I don't know why it's. It's like really got a lot here recently, but not as much back in the day. Can anyone explain me why? Someone said maps were their favorite form of of literature? Yeah, this is when I was looking at before and I was seeing the same thing. Like when I use the YouTube search, it's like puttering out here back further. But I have it doing it in order. So maybe they just didn't post as many videos. I think that's might be what was going on with the late show. So let's try another channel. I think that was a success enough that we can find another one. Granted, and keep in mind, we're saving these as CSVs, so we have them all. Again, it only went for 10 out of the 40. 515 results. So this had 516. And our other one has 515. So what's going on here? It's not actually working. Something we're doing is, is wrong because it's, it's like capping out at 515. YouTube wasn't that popular. It took a few years to catch on. I know. I think that they're there. I think that um, if we go to this channel again. We see how many videos this channel has. Does it say? 
Can we see how many videos this channel has? It's a lot. It's going to be like more than 10,000. Look how many views it has. Over a billion views. Uh, it's not going to tell us. So what's wrong in this code? Can anyone tell me? I knew I know I got it going working before, and maybe five hundred sixteen. Can I restate the issue? Yeah, so, okay, so the way I'm working this is I'm using the YouTube API to pull what I thought was um, up to 2,000 results. It feeds us a page of 50 results. So I divided my max results by 50 and I have us looping through that many pages of results. For, for some reason, it seems to end after 500, which would be 10 pages worth. That looks like 200. Yeah, so this is 200, but I'm feeding it in. The Git search results should be. Uh, I'm providing it this max results here, which I, I fed in as being 2000, right? So pull all video info should go to here. Max results here gets fed into get search results, max search results. This is overridden. Open the documentation. So this is the page token and the next page token. Wait, does the 200 get overridden? Yes, it does. It does. Like, let's just assume this is, that doesn't have a value in it. So basically it gets to a point where there is no next page token. And maybe that's just the way it works. Maybe it'll only provide up to a hundred. I think I got an idea. I got an idea. What if we try to fill in the gaps here by doing the published after and published before filters? Right? So we can do published before. Now we want to, so we want to just focus in on the days within 2021. Um, now these functions do not exist here. Sorry, these, uh, these do not appear in here. So we're going to make this none and pass this on. There we go. And now this should limit our query. So if it does limit at 500, then this will at least limit it down to a single year if we filter like this. 
Let's do the same plot here. It's a similar thing. Like we barely have anything from 2021 here. But this is looking, yeah, looking a little bit more filled out. So maybe we have to do filter down to specific date times, and then we make sure that we got all of those. And then we move on to the next one. So let's also add year in here, which we'll have as 2021. I guess we could have it as an integer. And then I'll make this ranged by 12, 31, December 31st of that year to the end year of that year. And then we'll make this save with the CSV with the year in it. And of course this breaks because it's not expect all this. Let's not run that it again. Ooh, is it going to stop at nine? All right, 472 for this year. So it looks like it does go from January 5th all the way to December 17th. Let's go ahead. and do our plot like before. I wanna make sure I don't run this. All right, this looks like pretty filled out. And then let's read in our existing one, PD read. The heck is this channel name? Let's concatenate these together. And then let's look at which ones are duplicated. Reset index and drop that. See if it's duplicated. Why is this not working? Unhashable type list. We can do a subset of column, columns as the video ID. Now this will show us anytime it's duplicated. Um, and let's sum this to see. 44 of them overlap. We can drop those duplicates. That's weird, I've never seen this before. Drop duplicates, pandas, unhashable type list. They put one too many brackets. Drop duplicates won't work because with lists in your data frame as the 
However, you can drop duplicates on the data frame casted as a string. Okay, so I have a list in my, that's what's going on. Let's do an info on this. One of these must be a list. Hey, hey, Clipped, welcome. MMMD came to drop like a go and and go to bed. Good night, MMMD. You can also see how many videos channel has met by searching the channel name. I think it's usually next to the name of the channel or maybe on Twitch. I think, I, yeah, if you can find it there. I know that like there are thousands, like they're um, more than we want to pull. So I think that if this basically doesn't go a full, um, basically if this doesn't go to 10, then we know that we haven't reached that limitation of it hitting uh, 500 before crashing. And now that I've comp combined these together, Let's do a subset here by video ID. We can do this because we don't have to worry about the list stuff. And basically this. I'm doing that too many times. Uh, and I didn't mean to do that. Shape is 943. All right, let's do two other peeps. All right, let's also look at this. There, this looks a little bit more natural. Like we're not missing um, 2021 out of 2022. This looks a little bit better. What we're going to look at, though, is the release time. That's, what, that's the big key. Let's delete all this. Uh, actually, undo, undo. Now we can loop, now we can start to get crazy and loop this. So we're gonna loop through all these channels. And we're gonna run for two years. And we're gonna say, we're gonna check if the file exists. If OS path exists. This will be our safeguard from not searching things that we don't know, we know already exist. Import OS, make sure I have that imported. Uh, print it exists all right so it says that this this file exists we could do this too yeah so this 2021 already exists so we would skip it let's add this to the bottom also add this to the bottom because we already ran it. I think we're good. Oh wait, I didn't add this, right? If this path exists, we want to say it exists and then continue. Basically skip over that one. All right, fingers crossed. Remove the first line in the for loop. I think I removed it in between the time that, okay, yeah, Nebster, you got my back. Thank you. So here we go. We're going to run this code. Hopefully it won't break anything. Let's skip this one because it already exists. 
But why is it doing... Oh, shoot. I did this wrong. Because it doesn't know the title until after it's queried. Oh, I did this wrong. Do you guys see what I did wrong? Anyone want to tell me? Hello, Ralk. Welcome to the chat. It's been a while. Hope you're doing well. So what I did wrong here was this channel title is found here after we pulled the data frame. Can I get this channel title somehow beforehand? I could do get channel ID first. I could do get channel from IT pullers import get channel ID. Get channel ID of our channel. This takes the channel name in YouTube. Ah, uh, but that only gives us the channel ID. All right, let's say if we add in this channel name, then it's gonna return the ID and the channel name. Let's see what it looks like in this. Channel title. Yeah, it's channel title. Uh, so we'll say return name, if return name, then it's going to return both of these. There we go. All right, so let's do this. Solar tests. Okay, so return name should also include the channel name, but it's just showing the ID. Oh, it needs to be a return. This needs to be a return statement. There we go. Channel tide tilter? <laughs> what are you saying, imposter engineer? All right, there we go. So we're gonna just do Does this have spaces in it? No, it has underscores. Underscores, why does it have underscores there and not here?
channel title. Should we just do this? Check the API, it may be an API thing where they replace space with underscore. It could be, I think it's because I'm pulling this from the items snippet. Really what I need is this response. Basically, I just need to run this. And see what the result is and see where channel name is in here. So channel title here without underscores. I think actually what it is, is probably in my cleaning code. Yeah, here, here's where I do it. I split, I split and I join the channel title here and then I replace it. So that's why. So I need to do the same thing with my result here. So this should be good. It's something I did after the fact. Channel title. Now this should work. Cause now it's pulled the correct channel title. Oh wait, nope. This needs to also be here. Let's close this. All right, so what are we doing? We're lo looping through each of these. Ooh, this should be, have a comma in it. I don't know if these ran correctly, but it looks like they did. So let's go ahead and run this again. Cannot par parse channel title. All right, what did I do wrong here? This needs to be tabbed. Good old Python needing tabbed and white spaces. They make it difficult, don't they? Yeah, they make it pretty difficult. It's, it could be worse. No, quota exceeded. This is what I was hoping not to hit. So unfortunately, this means I'm gonna have to run it again later. Oh no, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay, it could be worse. In the scheme of things, all those Daily Show videos. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can at least, we can at least do something with what we pulled. So I should, in theory, be able to now, let's clean this up a little bit. So I don't need any of this crap anymore. I can pull these together. All right, so in theory, if I come back to this next time, don't need any of these columns, I should be able to run this and it will only run the years where it has not completed before. It'll run through those years. So we figured that all that out and um, it will save them as separate CSVs here. We do, we should have two at least Kimmel, Colbert, and we can compare those two right now. So let's do some. All right, we're gonna do some EDAI slash wrangling. Um, so we're gonna use glob 
to get all the CSV files. I think we should delete these because they're not complete. This one, in, I guess, could be considered 2022. This one's gonna have to go into our old. December 14th, okay. So now we have only these. You with me? Can you just swap credentials just to pull the data? Probably, C could I get another API token? That's another thing to look into. Um, Let's see if I can load it up here. So I'm gonna look up my API console and actually show you guys how it's, why it's blocking me. So we're using the, um, we're using the YouTube Data API version three. Jeff Bezos, please help us. Yeah, he'd be happy to. Um, so you could see that I like haven't been using it. And then this is every time that we've run the API, we were running it to pull data. Um, and you could see this is when we tried the bigger run. And then this is, I think, when it failed. I don't know why. Uh, this is the aired out. That's at 10.29, so that's just a few minutes ago. Don't show my keys on the stream. Yeah, that's a good idea. So let me make sure I put it over here. I can also just cancel out these keys if anyone uses them. All right, so I'm not showing my actual key. So can I just request a new one is the question. I think I'd have to make a whole new, uh, a whole new, a whole new request in, and it's, it's not going to be worth it right now. I can try, I can try this from the top cause it doesn't look like it hit 10,000, but probably did. And yeah, it's just going to give me this. 403 response. I've exceeded my quota. That's okay. We could still wrangle with what we have. Um, so we're going to take our CSVs. Uh, we're going to do list comprehension to read them in as a single data frame. So the shape of this is 2,800. Uh, so we must have failed a bunch of times if it, we should have 10, see this is why I'm a little confused because I, I thought we had 10,000. We've only gotten 2,800 responses here. Hi from Chile, hey, welcome, welcome Pedro. Uh, so let's first look and make sure we don't have any duplicated video IDs. So a thousand of these are duplicated. How are a thousand of them duplicated?
Let's look at these duplicated one ones. Oh, are they a bunch of ones with video ID as null? I don't know why the video ID would be null for any of these, but that's probably why. It's weird that the API would not return video ID for some of these. Let's look at the kind. All right, so it does look like almost a thousand of these have null values for the video IDs, which is really weird. Now let's do channel title and see how many we have remaining of each. Hmm. Do you know if it only calls live videos? No, it should be all of them. Um, so the weird thing is it worked with this Seth Meyers one. It did not work. And the Kimmel one, it did not like the cold bear one. Uh... Yeah, it's just straight up missing the video IDs in this. It must be like a different format. Because this one has kind. And this has kind underscore stats. Maybe I need to use the video ID stats. Let's look at what we got here. We want to find video ID. Hmm. Okay, so this is, uh, I see what's happening. Okay, people, I think I figured out what hap what's happening. Can I tell you what's happening? Do you guys want to know? Okay, so pull all the video info. I'm actually doing this in two steps and I forgot about this. So we had looked into this search results, the function that I wrote before. So this basically iterates through the the 2000 or however many 
uh, videos that we want to pull in and it gets a list of them, but it doesn't have all the stats with it. Then what I have to do is run, I run a second query on all of these video IDs. That's why it's failing after 2000 videos requests because it's actually querying them each twice. So it's probably a little bit more than uh, 3000 or however many that we queried and we hit our 10,000 limit, but we're querying each video we're querying to get the channel IDs to start with, and then we query a second time to get all the statistics about it. The reason why my data set is missing this video ID info is probably because I have a... See, I don't know why it's failing without... um without throwing an error, but I'm guessing that it did. It wasn't able to actually get the stats. But maybe that's, maybe I'm wrong there. Cause then why would it actually have the kind stats? Wouldn't it have failed halfway through? So let's group by channel title and let's do kind stats value counts. All right, here it has 963. So I'm going to have to something to investigate. My suspicion is that it has to do something with the fact that I'm querying them separately. But at least it does explain my confusion about why it's been giving me the time after only getting results for 2000 videos. All right. So we want to look at the times that they were released. Are the titles unique? Can you use as I probably. So let's do a subset on the title. Mm, it looks like these might not be unique. It's hard to say. Actually, let's see, is this, what's the shape of this? If it's like 44, yeah, it's 51. So this is, yeah, that's probably a good way to do it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is DF drop duplicates with the subset of the title. And that'll be our new way of filtering. Um. All right, so what we want to do is we want to see the publish time when the publish hour is. So I have have it converted into Eastern time. And this is the clock Eastern time that I computed in my other function. So it converts from UTC to Eastern. And then I have the clock Eastern, which is the hour plus uh, the minute divided by 60. So this should be fractional of the hour value that it was published. Let's group by channel title. Let's look at the clock Eastern. Let's, let's do some of this. Seaborn is Seaborn. Let's do. Let's 
Let's pull out the year, maybe. DF publish. It's almost like we want publish time Eastern. Make this a date time. Pull out the year. Why isn't it giving me a year? Oh, dot year. Okay, screw that idea. DF group by, we're gonna do Seaborn box plot with this data is this. The X axis is gonna be the channel title and the Y axis is the, the that uh, Eastern publish time. Publish clock Eastern. Just get the year by splitting a string and getting the first element. Yeah, but it's, I, I wanna parse it as a date and I don't know why it's not working. Let's import matplotlib. All right, we're getting some ideas of the differences from when they post them. So here's the thing. When they're posted late at night, see these dots up here late at night? Um, I think those are the ones that we've started to see come in in the past year. So let's also look at this. Let's take the uh, view count in millions and let's plot a histogram with maybe 50 bins. Okay, so 500 bins. Uh, so we have a lot going on here, right? It looks like this left side, like under 1 million views, or maybe like 0.75, so 750,000 views. Uh, these are like our low end ones that we'll ignore. What, what they mainly post is like the monologue stuff that gets a lot of views. Uh, that's the stuff that they post early. So maybe if we query this view count for when it's more than 0.75. Now we see something. Now we're seeing something. And maybe plotting this just as a time series would make it a little bit easier. Let's look at the counts of each. I mean, so it is pretty, here's the interesting thing. It's not like the Seth Meyers one doesn't have very many videos. I mean, it has a hundred some less than the Kimmel ones. But the, the deviation in when the postings happen is not so drastic. I think that's because there was a big jump from when they were posting from early in the morning to here. 2.15 and that's the box plot. They got that posting automated. Yeah, they must have it automated or look at this. What if we do violin plot? This is, this is what's happening. This is my theory that's being shown. And I know this doesn't, this looks kind of weird, but what this is showing the distribution of when they posted it. So I think what used to happen is they used to be here. They used to be plotting it. Uh, sorry. They used to be posting these like the next day, the middle of the next day. Like they do their monologue they actually record it at like five o'clock Eastern. Then they show it on TV, 1130 Eastern. 
And then they're like, let's wait until, let's wait until the next day around like m- middle of the day. Actually, you no, know, they might, they might wait until like one or two in the morning, then post it on YouTube. But then they've shifted to saying, no, let's not wait till TV airs it. Let's publish it on YouTube at like 10 o'clock. So let's try to see this in terms of a time series. Um, that might make things a little bit easier. So still doing the 0.75 filtering just to filter out these not big views ones. Let's group by uh, channel title. View count million values. Let's plot and let's make a scatter. Of course, this isn't working. Can only be used for data frames. This is a data frame. Oh, I don't want to do scatter. I want to do style is the just the dots. Here we go. I don't want view count though. This I want the published clock time. Look at this. Look at this. What is going on here? Let's make a legend. Um, So this is the publish time. What are we seeing here? Uh, we're seeing some automation for sure. Seth Myers has got it automated. Uh, Colbert next. They're both NBC. Maybe NBC makes them only release at certain times or they schedule them for certain times. Kimmel on the other hand, they're just all over the place. They're actually uploading it like whenever the guy is ready to upload it. I see what the problem is though. I need to set the index. This X axis doesn't make any sense. We want the index to be the publish uh, time. There we go, I think. No. All right, we're gonna have to deal with this, this issue to really get at what I'm, I'm excited though. This is pretty exciting. All right, it worked for some reason this time. All right, now we got it. Let's put this uh, legend over to the side so it's not in the way. We're going to make the title outside of this. Right? Could it be trying different times to see which get more views? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. They have a break at Christmas. It does look like that. Yeah, they, they usually have like set times they take off, like in the middle of the summer or um, right around the new year. Holidays, they usually take off. But what I'm interested in seeing more so is when do they publish the, the things? I'm almost thinking that 
I should remove this filter. All right, I remove that filter. We could see a lot more. So it looks like I don't know what I'm seeing here. What are we seeing here? We're seeing that some of them definitely schedule when they're going to be published. Is this tag related to when the show actually airs East Coast versus West? So they both, they'll both air at the same, well, okay, so Seth Meyers is like an hour later. He, they're really late night. So I think he's been, my theory was that he was the first one to start posting these early. Um, how do we find the max video per day? So if we like, cause this isn't quite showing me what I want to see, but yeah, I thought that uh, Seth Meyers was starting to post his early and then the rest of them caught on to that and they were starting to make theirs early as well. See, like if we plotted this with query the time Eastern is greater than 20. It's hard to see the density here because there's just so many of them. But I think what we're seeing here is more are being released. Surprise, because I thought some of these were, were coming out really early. I wish we had the other channels too, because a lot of them are dead giveaways. Should run a Nova test. Yeah. What I want to do is sort of like a group by the channel title and the calendar date. To date time. I think what I need to do here is say um, it that it does have a time zone. Is there a time zone argument? Infer date time format is true. See, this just makes it an object. How was I converting it to Eastern? So I was just doing this. Um, so if I take this publish time Eastern and only take the date out, publish date Eastern, and then I group by the channel title publish date Eastern, and I sort values by the view count. View count in million. Let's do ascending equals. And let's take the first. So what this will do is, and then reset this index. What we've done here is I've taken 
only one video per channel per day. It's at least what this should do. And it should be the top viewed video for that day. So if I do this, make that call like data frame top of the day. And then we just plot this one instead. We re remove this query. Let's double check this to make sure. Uh, channel title, title and publish date Eastern. All right, the value counts on all of these are just one. So that's like expected. So if I group by the channel title, publish clock Eastern, unless they try a way to profile is it? Any thoughts on fusion breakthrough? What's the fusion breakthrough? Oh, that's a good idea. The group by day mean. Group by Damien, Operator, Snickney, you know what's up. Then let's unstack this. I don't know if this is going to work. Will this work? Is it just going to break everything? It's a major breakthrough. Nuclear fusion was produced in a lab for the first time ever. Really? Scientists have achieved nuclear fusion breakthrough. What does this mean? I don't know. Fusion industry is suddenly white hot. So they're looking at a business standpoint. Scientists achieve nuclear fusion. This is awesome. I'm going to have to read about this. It was all over the news. I've been working all day. I haven't had time to read the news. Working, then family, then you guys. Yeah, I forgot my phone in my car. I went to go get a... Um, I went to go to the dentist and then I came back and forgot my phone in the car like almost all day. So what I don't understand is this doesn't quite equal what I'm seeing. Well, I guess there's like this bimodal thing, but it's consistent through the. Through the days. I kind of was expecting a different publish time for everything, which it kind of is like messy here. But I don't think these are the ones that they post like right at night, right before the show airs. So maybe that's something I got to figure out. 
means zero emissions, clean energy. Really? That's huge then, right? But energy still has to be harvested as heat and then used for generating electricity. Okay. Okay, did you guys have fun tonight? Was that too all over the place or did we have fun? I need to rerun that code after my ban, after my limitation on querying is lifted in 24 hours. I'll rerun that. We'll get more data. Fusion stuff is mostly hype. Yeah, usually what I do is I go on to Reddit and then the top people responding on Reddit who know, well, at least pretend like they know what they're talking about. It's not on the top of Reddit. Weird. But it is here. And people are asking if it's legit or not. And someone says it's in between being like a complete breakthrough and kind of nice buy yourself a chocolate treat breakthrough. I don't know. Got to read more about that. Department of Energy made a big announcement. It was breaking news yesterday. Yeah. What can I say? Okay. So thanks everyone for hanging out. I'm going to go to bed. And uh, it's supposed to snow out here. So if it's snowing where you are, stay warm. Stay close to those people that you love. And yeah, thanks for uh, sticking with me. Watch the video later. As always, I'm going to throw out some stuff here into the chat. So if you if you enjoyed this stream, then do exclamation point Discord to join the Discord. I'm going to copy and paste it here for YouTube folks because I don't think you get that link. Um, exclamation point YouTube. Now, I know it's just like spamming my own chat with this, but click that to get to my YouTube. Or I think it's uh, youtube.com at Rob Mola. That also works. Probably should change it for that. And then uh, exclamation point. Oh yeah, Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'll put this in here for some fun stuff. And then of course, if you're not watching me on Twitch already, which is where you should be watching, that's where you can follow on Twitch. So all the links are there. Click them all. Subscribe to everything. You know the deal. Okay. Thanks everyone for hanging out with me tonight. I'm going to find someone that we can raid on Twitch. Any suggestions? There's a guy playing drums. Midnight Simon. It's been a while since I raided Midnight Simon. So let's give him a raid. Raideroo. Just going to show you guys. Here he is. We're going to all join him. So if you want to leave, go ahead and leave now. If you're on Twitch, otherwise you can you'll be joining the raid and I'll see you guys next time I stream. Tomorrow's my anniversary, so I'm not going to be probably streaming tomorrow, but uh maybe sometime soon. And uh Check out for new YouTube videos maybe coming out here in the next week or so. So excited for next year. Um, I need to have a stream where I actually go over my goals like I did last year. That'll be a good tradition to get into. Okay, thanks everyone for hanging out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. All right, bye YouTube. You too.